If it's Trump versus Buttigieg, who do you vote for? Um, probably Buttigieg. Trump versus Klobuchar? I don't know. Trump versus Sanders? Oh no, I, if I have to vote for one, I'd vote for Trump. So the important thing to think about is the independents in New Hampshire because they're very fickle. New Hampshire is known for its undeclared voters who can choose which party's primary ballot they take and who can be pretty unpredictable drives us crazy as pollsters. What is the kind of voter that is likely to tip the scales in this primary? I believe it's the independent voter because if you look at the statistics, Democrats have the lowest undecided right now. There are different swaths of independents. You have the conservative independents who are leaning towards Tulsi Gabbard. You have the moderate independents who are leaning towards Pete Buttigieg, now Amy Klobuchar. They might be able to make a difference in the rank order we're finishing the Democratic side. 42% of New Hampshire's registered voters are undeclared, but experts say only about a third are true independents. The rest tend to vote with one party. We met some of those undeclared voters who usually vote Republican. This primary, they're doing something different. I think I'm gonna vote for Chelsea. How certain are you that that's who you're gonna vote for? I'm going to say 80%. In 2016, did you vote in the Republican or the Democratic primary? I voted in the Republican primary. And are you confident you'll vote for a Democrat in November? Ugh. <laughs> I'm going to have to vote for Bertie. In my own circle of friends, they voted for Trump. And now they are registered Democrat. Meet Erin Wessling. In 2016, she supported Marco Rubio. But this time around... Tuesday, I am going to be voting for Pete. Are you registered with either party or are you undeclared? I'm undeclared. Since my 18th birthday, I've been an undeclared voter. Let's go back to 2016. Sure. So Rubio for the primary, and then what happened in the general? I wrote him in in the general. I couldn't vote for Trump. And what was your reaction when he was elected? I sat that night watching the results, sick to my stomach, and found myself in my daughter's room sitting in the rocking chair crying. I really worried about what was going to happen. Have you ever volunteered for a campaign in the past? Never. This is the first time. Why this time? It, it, Pete has rules of the road. One of them is respect. Another is belonging. Another is truth. I actually belong to um, a Facebook page that's Republicans for Pete. Pete refers to them as the future former Republicans. Huh. I think he is finding a lot of ground with the independents or the Republicans that are fed up with what the Republican Party has become. So is this group just an anomaly? Or is there enough of a phenomenon to make a difference? President Trump has a 94% approval rating with Republicans, and his 2020 campaign has a strong ground game in New Hampshire. We're glad you're here for this special occasion with President Donald Trump. Just one day before the primary, Trump held a rally in Manchester. But right across the street, I met Jennifer Horn, who's trying to rally disaffected conservatives to defeat Donald Trump. The Lincoln Project was launched by a group of former and current Republicans who are committed to defeating Donald Trump and Trumpism at the ballot box in November. In 2016, you were the chair of the GOP here I in was. New Hampshire. What happened? <laughs> well, Donald Trump won. So your goal is to defeat Donald Trump. How yes. are you trying to do that? Well, first, I remind everybody that here in New Hampshire, there are over 20,000 fewer registered Republicans than there were in when Donald Trump got elected. Both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party has seen registration right. drop. Voters registered as undeclared have, right. have risen. Some of the experts we've talked to have said a lot of it has to do with, you know, about 20% of the population turns around right. uh, every cycle. There's, there's a lot of movement of people. Right. And it, all of that's absolutely accurate. Every cycle you see a change, you see kind of a shift in the, in the voting numbers, but the 20,000 number is significant. So for those of us who are Republicans, that means we have to look in November and seriously find a way to feel comfortable voting for the Democratic nominee. The bigger concern it can't be anymore about the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. It has to be about the irreparable damage that he's doing to the United States of America. It's still not clear how many people like Jennifer are out there or how big of a difference they can make. But for voters like Brenda, a difference is something she'd like to see. Why in this election are you voting in the Democratic primary? Um, it's really hard. I, 
you know, our, we have a low unemployment rate, which is fabulous. Um, you know, we have a good economy, which is fabulous. We have small business growing, which is fabulous. I don't like the tone. I have three grandchildren, and I think, oh, my gosh. Oh, so it gets me all teary. What kind of crazy world are we, are we bringing them up in? And what kind of world are they growing up in where our president mocks people who are handicapped and talks so nastily about people that he doesn't like or who don't agree with him? And I think there's other people who can lead the country and do what needs to be done and be respectful at the same time. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.